Hello and welcome to You've Got a Point, our brand new podcast for our wonderful creative school at Teesside University. I have Matt here with me. Would you like Hello. to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Matt Hulbert. Uh, I'm fairly new to the university framework. I've only been here nine weeks. I'm senior lecturer in design and I'm very keen to find out a little bit more about our lovely school from somebody who's a little bit more established <laughs> than I. Well, I've been here, so I am course leader for our wonderful BA illustration degree. I also teach on our MA visual communication degree as well and on our graphic design degree as well. And sometimes I've taught a little bit on product and a little bit on fashion and lots of different things. I've been here, yeah, about five years, um, never really full time because I'm busy with my own practice as well. But yeah, it's a it's a really great place to study and a very creative place. Oh, how did you end up here then? If that's not too much of a loaded question. Well, I was teaching somewhere else part time um, for a few years, and I've been a practicing artist and illustrator. Gosh, I think for about fifteen years now. Nothing um, I've seen. Um, I've just done well. About a year ago, I did illustrations for the Scottish government organ donation campaign, and it was on TV and oh. in billboard and billboards and in bus stands and stuff. That was pretty cool. Oh, very cool. Yeah, yeah and you can watch a lady. Um, remove a t-shirt that has like one of my illustrations on as she's jogging which is quite cool yeah, yeah that was a really good job that was really nice it was for an agency in edinburgh called leaf um they were really fun to work with although i had my work had to be approved by the scottish minister for health which was quite scary yeah, yeah. but i've done lots and lots of different jobs yeah <laughs> and did it get his past first time no <laughs> <laughs> it's not that easy is it no it was a really yeah there was a lot of work that went into that because you the I the concept behind it was um organs that were made out of things from nature and you All have right. to be really careful with that so in in the end it ended up being some lungs made out of flowers the original concept was a, a heart made out of birds and i really love that concept but they sometimes use animal parts in organ donation so they thought that might have got the wrong message so there was lots of other i guess iterations of designs yeah, yeah. for it yeah that was quite an interesting job yeah i love that i mean you know that that's problem solving 101 isn't it like yeah. you, you have an interpretation and then you put out then something that you've just not even considered just blindsides you and you think right okay how do i readapt and readjust to, to hit the brief yeah so what it, did it end up looking like yeah so it was like a, a pair of lungs that were all made out of flowers it was really nice actually. no you didn't do the high in the end no i didn't in the end oh, uh, right. different illustrator did that one oh, right. <laughs> <Possibly>. <laughs> um, so they had like three different illustrators doing different illustrations for the job um, but yeah it was really nice it's really nice when you get to work on a project that is kind of designed for good and i think we're quite big on that yeah. here at t side yeah, i mean I don't know if your students enter it, but a lot of our graphic design and illustration students and master students as well enter a thing called Creative Conscience and they yes. win a lot of awards. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do your students do that as they well? They do, yeah. They're doing, they're doing an RSA brief at the moment, which is which is along that, that line. But yeah, Creative Conscience. And we actually had a, a winner last year. Um, Zara King came first place in the whole country in a, wow. in a plastics award. So yeah, we've got some pedigree in there. But I think it's such an important area to to kind of get the students to focus on that that more aware kind of topic, you know, about sustainability and and, and the importance of of what we can do as creatives. Yeah, I think that's. I, I see more and more students now that don't just want to do kind of like vacuous projects, but they want to do something that makes a difference in the world. Yeah, um, we do really well in it. I mean, one student one year did this the most beautiful kind of illustrated graphic novel on what it's like to be an introvert. And I've never like wanted to cry so much when I was assessing somebody's <laughs> work, it was beautiful. And she won a Creative Conscience Award for that. But wow. yeah, I think that's I think that's really wonderful that our students want to do things that make a difference. So just very similar, I guess, that, but it shows the um, kind of similarities in our uh, dif different disciplines. Same, same student actually, Zara, she did a book around the issues raised around euthanasia and that oh, we don't wow. talk about death and she actually put that into a book and it was a children's book about owning a dog and the dog grew up throughout the book and then it passed away and then you had to turn the heart off the dog and then all the pages vanished because it was like a digital book oh wow and then you'd send the book back to a company and they'd send out a little uh 
seed thing with a thing and you grow a plant and always remember it so it was, yeah. it was like a kid being able to break the connection you know of like okay now the book's gone now it can't ever come back but yeah that was the first uh crit i've ever sat in where i had to you know hold back the, <laughs> the old <laughs> the old songs yeah. wow yeah. that's amazing yeah it is it is it's good there's i think there's you know loads of loads of similarities when you when you go into it. Have you ever done anything? I mean, obviously, it sounds like you've done quite a diverse range of um, subjects. Is that is illustration always been from day dot or is it something that you came into? I think I knew I wanted to draw. Um, and then whilst I was a student, so I studied graphic design and I focused on illustration. Um, I worked at a very unusual art gallery and design studio. So that was quite an interesting kind of introduction to the art world. So we would have exhibitions by, I don't know if you've heard of a guy called Banksy and have his work in it. Um, a guy, we had the solo exhibition of Ayn, his first solo exhibition. He was the guy that David Cameron bought a piece, give a piece to Obama, a very famous um, okay. street artist. Um, Pierre Revo, lots of people seem to know who he is. He does like dripping eyes. Um, so I was like thrown into this. It was a very much a kind of, interesting world of kind of meeting all these kind of really big artists and that so I ended up in this kind of weird sort of street art scene even okay. though I wasn't a street <laughs> artist and then in my degree show I got picked up by a gallery that also represented people like Banksy, Damien Hirst and Peter Blake and I ended up kind of exhibiting which was not what I planned to do and it was during it was in 2008 so Norm, at that point, to be an illustrator, you would then get an agent and you would work for an agency. But at that point, all the agencies were closing down and everything was kind of changing in the economy. And there was this kind of new world of social media that was suddenly oh, growing. Media, yeah, social yeah. media. Devil. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my work got kind of well known through blogs. Okay. So it went kind of viral. Were um, you at university at the time? It was kind of uh, when I was at university, but as I was leaving, much bigger. Okay. So I didn't really know what to do that because that wasn't like a known thing and it was kind of looked down and oh my God, like you're so big on blogs and you haven't got an agent. So I ended up kind of having exhibitions like all over the world and having like, and being like um, group exhibitions and like next to all these like really famous artists and I'd be like, what am I doing here? <laughs> and then I started kind of picking up illustration work, mainly through kind of friends and people I'd met at university, that idea that when you're at university, they the first network and the people you yeah, meet. So absolutely. some were on my course, on other courses. I'm still really good friends with people that did other courses as well. And one of my best friends was in the year below me at university. So that kind of um, was my first network. And it's sometimes people that I'd met on nights out as well <laughs> became my clients it's as well at the university. It's all part of the experience. <laughs> um, so I started picking up illustration work and it just kind of grew from there. Um, and then... Well, we're talking about really rewarding projects and kind of design for good and illustration for yeah, good. Yeah. So I went to Thailand to work at this animal rescue place and draw the animals and get to know them as part of my research project. But there was loads of elephants there. Right. And I went, so you had the choice of either looking after wildlife in general or just the elephants. And I was like, oh, everybody always looks after elephants, so I'm going to do the rest. And then completely fell in love with the elephants there. Right. And I, there was one in particular called Pai Lin, and she, her, um, where she lived was like next to where we ate dinner. So she hung out with us quite a bit. Right, right. And I used to sit drawing her. And if I didn't talk to her or give her attention, she would just turn around and show me her bum. So I've got like <laughs> loads of drawings of her bottom. I had a life drawing class like that. Oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Was it an elephant? No. <laughs> Sadly, it wasn't. Oh, it was. <laughs> but yeah, that was really nice to kind of work on that project. And then years later spend some time with elephants and I spent an afternoon with um, rescued orangutans as well drawing oh, wow. them and a lot of monkeys I even have kind of like scars on my hands from feeding monkeys and yeah that was really nice yeah is that something that obviously I've, I've you know seen some of your illustrations and they're fantastic and I guess do you think knowing your subject to that to that level to that having that kind of closeness that bond with your your chosen subject comes across in your illustrations? Is that something that you feel is important that, that people do? Well, I think when you're an illustrator, you're also kind of a bit of a storyteller as well. So I think it's really important to meet 
individual animals rather than an animal as a kind of whole species and get to know their stories and their individual personalities and that they have names and they have stories and they've come from places and I think that's really important and I think it's really important for our students to draw from life as I do as well so we take students drawing from life and actually seeing animals and learning to draw from them as well and I think that's important I think we spend a lot of time looking at a very small screen and we need to kind of look at yeah. the world as well yeah, and I think Illustrators, the, the best way to kind of start off as an illustrator is your sketchbook and just drawing everything around you. You don't have to show anybody it. I mean, some of my drawings are terrible, especially when I'm trying to draw moving animals, but that's your place to start your kind of voice as an illustrator and kind of build up that creativity. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I know I joked about life drawing, but I did do it in college and <laughs> it was such an important aspect. And now I, I illustrate differently because I'm, I'm from a product background, so we draw more from our sort of shoulders and are quite quick and dirty in some respects. But it all goes back to that real understanding of form and being able to convey what it is you're looking at onto a piece of paper. Um, I'm a big advocate of that. I, I don't know if I see it very much now. Is life drawing still a thing? Oh. We've been doing life drawing today and we've got some more tomorrow oh, with right, the students. Oh, so go. today we've been doing clothes life drawing. So we've had a wonderful fashion technician, Amanda, has been our model. Oh, so right. she's start, start <laughs> reading a book today. And then tomorrow we've got a new model coming in. Right, we're doing right. lots of drawing exercises. Um, I think you've just got to draw like literally everything. Yeah, and, and life yeah. drawing is always that kind of starting point, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. If you kind of go back to like the Royal Academy, which was the first ever art school, they always started off with life drawing. Um, me and Leslie, our fine art lecturer, was we were discussing it with the students today. We've got absolutely incredible facilities here mm. and all the amazing kind of technicians and I've been trying to get them to have a go of everything. So like playing on the risograph and understanding oh, yeah, how that yeah. works and then getting them over in the print room and then the 3D studios and then the fashion studios and... Some of them have never been exposed to even doing anything analog. They've done everything digital as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm. And some students do everything hand drawing and then you've got to like throw them into doing something digital as well. Yeah, it's, you, it's really interesting. Are you, are you still, as a, as a kind of illustrator, do you, do you kind of focus on the old craft of, of illustration, the kind of, as a, as a foundation to build off of? Or is it more fluid now? I think there's a lot of students think it has to be either analog or digital. Um, and I think because my work is hand-drawn, people assume that I'm like super analog, but I'm like a total software nerd and I love learning <laughs> software. Like I'm learning Blender at the moment, which is really hard. You it's know in my wheelhouse, to... yeah, Blender. Yeah. We love Blender. Yeah, it's really hard to get your head around how that works. Yeah. It works very different. And then... Um, I have learned so many different animation softwares. I'm doing video and sound editing at the moment. Um, so I did a residency in Panama this year. Wow. I'm living with an indigenous tribe, as you do, drawing out there. Um, and I captured so many sounds. I don't know, even know what animals I've captured in the sounds. It's like crazy sounds. And I've got like howler monkeys and things like that. So I've been making digital sound installations to go alongside my drawings and... Wow. Um, I make books in my work, which involves a lot of digital work as well. And like, I think you've got to be exposed to all the kind of different tools and different ways you can work. And I think that keeps you kind of really fresh in your career as well to kind of do all of those different things. Lots of jobs I've had I couldn't have done if I didn't teach myself lots of different things. And yeah. I think that's really important for our students as well that I don't know... Um, on your course but on ours they get exposed to so much at the beginning especially our first years inducted onto everything can thrown in the deep end um, and I think that's really cool oh absolutely yeah I think it's it's what's good is when you've got a, a cohort that you do kind of throw in at the deep end so to speak you've got people of differing skills different experiences different ages like a big mix and they all kind of grow together over the, the three years and, and some get pulled up and some get you know mm. encouraged to go further and it's a real nice dynamic I think front loading that is is really important because you want to challenge them don't you yeah really? well I took um the illustration students um this year in the welcome week and they started over to the product design 3d studios oh, yeah. And the technicians are like super excited about the students doing like 3D printing and making puppets of their work yeah. and like doing kind of, because we've got a module that is about kind of 
like 3D, so like paper cutting, um, making ceramics, all those kind of things. So we've just got a kiln as well, which yeah, is yeah. really cool. And like pushing all those boundaries and making like really interesting, kind of exciting illustration as well. Yeah, that was really nice how excited they were. Oh, you can do this, you can do that. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, we've got the guys in the workshop. Are from, we've got such a great workshop. It's such a, a good thing to have. Yeah. Um, We've got the metal workshop as well, so started looking at getting the students to do some welding and things. It's just if they're interested in doing it, you know, it's a new skill to learn. We've got yeah. the facilities, just get in there and, and learn a new skill. You know, I think it's from any background, having hand skills. And, and so I suppose a, a big part of, of what makes the course um, unique is that you're keeping yourself very much at the cusp of the kind of front end illustration the business side as well as the art side, you, you're right at the cutting edge of it all. Yeah, the, the illustration industry changes probably about every five years. So when I graduated, it was very much you are a certain type of illustrator, so you're either editorial or children's book, and that's very much changed. Illustrators now exhibit, they produce their own things, and it's less likely that you have, I mean, some still have agents, but it's less likely. It's more likely that you self-promote on social media as well. So because everybody who teaches on it still works in industry and has kind of years of experience, we bring in maybe things we haven't necessarily done right as well, <laughs> like our experience of things that maybe have gone wrong. Yeah. And we can teach students that. We can teach them like what a contract is. It's not the most exciting thing to learn, but honestly, it's so important. When I left university, we didn't get any of this. And then right. it took me years to learn how you do all of that. And like, how do you promote your, your work? How do you even like speak to somebody? How do you talk to a client? All of those different things yeah. are really, really important because it's not enough just to make students that make beautiful work. We've got to make students that are prepared for what they're going to do in the future as well. And that's really a kind of central point to the course here at Teesside is that it's not just, you know, cre creating creatives, that's a bit of a mouthful, but you know, <laughs> is creating students that are prepared for industry. And we want students to be doing live briefs and putting the work out there whilst they're students as well. Yeah, because yeah. they've got that sort of protective environment and they can make mistakes at the uni, but when they're out there in the, the big bad world, you know, yeah. they're, they're more exposed, aren't they? And I think certainly what I've seen, they've got some friends that are graphic designers and web developers and and when they started out the you've you've got to balance that i suppose you've got to balance that i really want to get some work but i need to not undersell myself and, yeah and just trying to find that place so so having i guess you know lecturers that are, that are doing that same dance all the time you'll be able to know exactly what kind of world they're going into you yeah know? well sometimes i'll bring in a project as i'm working on it and show it to the students so i'll be like okay so this is my sketches this is the work in development this is what the client has looked for this is like the feedback where would you go from here yeah. and i chat to them sometimes about projects i've done um so i did you get designer's block <laughs> i just think so it's what would you do next <laughs> yeah. I any ideas for me and <laughs> i just think it's really interesting for them to see the process rather than it's just you know putting out final work yeah. i don't know what it's like for you but when we get visiting speakers in students like to hear when things have gone wrong oh, absolutely. rather yeah. than just yeah. here's my wonderful final work yeah yeah which i think is really important and i've I worked on a really lovely um, illustrated fairy tale website, interactive website, which sounds super complicated, for um, a company called Gardner Richardson in Newcastle, which were one of the nicest design agencies I've ever worked for, still think a lot of them. And But it was a huge amount of work and it was storyboards and sketches and development. And I bring that in and I show students, like this is what the character originally looked like and this is the development sketches these are the kind of storyboards this is the text and, and how it develops as well mm -hmm. and I think that's really important for students to see that too yeah um, and we have like one of our lecturers has just talked at Pictoplasma Festival oh, and, cool. and things like that and I think you don't want to be taught about somebody who just is like a doctor of your subject you want to talk about you want to I mean, I'm doing a doctorate at the moment. So it's a bit of a funny thing to say, but uh, you want to know. Yeah, you're a practitioner. Yeah, a practitioner. Yeah. yeah, and I, yeah. I don't think I could ever do the job I'm doing without having a foot in the industry and, yeah. and working in it as well. And I also 
I think I would be a little bit bored if I wasn't drawing all the time as well. <laughs> That's totally, yeah, I think if you're, if you're passionate, then yeah. you, know, you want to still be doing it. Don't Although you? today when I was teaching, I was looking at some of the students' work and I'm like, oh my God, this is actually brilliant. I was drawing along with them and I was like, I'm going to stop because like some of the <laughs> student work is so good. <laughs> yeah, some really, really brilliant students on the illustration course. Cool. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I feel like when they get into second year, these first years, that they can definitely start putting the work out straight away. Um, oh. Yeah, I'm really excited to see what they do. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, because it's a it's a brand new course. It's only in its first year. So originally we had graphic design and illustration. Yeah. And we had loads of successful illustration graduates that we decided to kind of pull the courses apart so we could kind of do a bit more in depth. And honestly, like I'm over the moon with the students that we've got and the work that they're doing. Yeah, I think we're really lucky. Yeah. Is, there, is the, the synergies between the two? I guess it's a lot to do with with process. He talked about how um, all that work that you put together for that for that client, it's like understanding that you can't just look at a blank piece of paper and draw yeah. what's in your head. It, it's the same as graphics. I mean, you know, yeah, there's, that, there's that kind of. I guess it's not. It's never a straight line, is it? It's that research development, going backwards and forwards, those iterations, and and that design squiggle. Yeah, the design squiggle. Yeah, the design squiggle. Yeah, that's, yeah, great. that's a great, great, yeah, explanation of it. But yeah, I think that's um, there's a similar process to graphics, but I think illustration kind of sits somewhere between graphic design and fine art sometimes, yeah, yeah, and I get it that. kind of. For a long, long time, it wasn't really seen as its own discipline, but recently we've had a lot more books published about it. We now have um, illustration research. We have conferences about it. And because it's such a growing discipline and it's so popular at the moment, it's becoming its own kind of standalone. And I think anybody that's interested in studying it or going into illustration at the moment, it's a really, really exciting time to do it because everybody in the world wants British illustrators because they're so good and there's just so much happening. and as it's moved into kind of illustrators being entrepreneurs as well there's so much opportunity in that as well I just think it's a really kind of exciting discipline I know I'm biased but <laughs> yeah. I think it is yeah, yeah it's, it's very convincing <laughs> <laughs> like Sam yeah trying to, trying to change careers <laughs> <laughs> thanks for joining us today Amy that's been really great to hear um, about your new course and if you want to find out anything about any courses you may be interested in uh, do come along to one of our open days or you can find out more at uh, tease.ic.uk